Welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into the thrilling dystopian world of Dark Planet Episode 1, Inhabited Island, a 2008 Russian sci-fi film that transports us to a mysterious and totalitarian society on a distant planet. In 2157, humanity made monumental educational strides, effectively eradicating wars, hunger, and terrorism. Earth's environment has recovered. Medical advancements can cure any disease, and space travel is commonplace. Max is journeying through the cosmos in his spaceship. His journey dramatically turns when an asteroid collides with his ship, causing severe damage and forcing him to make an emergency landing on the nearest planet. Max escapes just before the ship explodes, leaving him stranded in this unfamiliar world. As he explores, he stumbles upon evidence of a recent bonfire and notices a creature lurking nearby. He attempts to communicate, but the creature flees when a soldier named Zef appears and points a gun at Max, uttering incomprehensible words. Max quickly uses a translation device from his belt, but Zef shoots down the belt and captures him in a nearby town. Max is shocked by the town's stark resemblance to Earth's darker historical periods. In the town, Max is taken to a laboratory where scientists place a helmet on his head to read his thoughts while questioning him. They are skeptical about his origins and decide to send him to a mental hospital in the capital under Guy's watch. When they leave, everyone around them starts fervently singing the national anthem, pledging allegiance to their government. Suddenly, Zef collapses from a seizure and is whisked away by officials. As they travel to the city, Max notices the dire conditions of the town and towering structures built every few miles, which Guy explains are defenses against enemies. Their journey is abruptly interrupted by an explosion that topples one of the towers onto the road, causing chaos and destruction that kills several people and damages the vehicles. A large metal beam impales Max's truck, trapping Guy underneath, but Max quickly rescues him with remarkable strength. Max learns that rebels, intent on overthrowing the government, are targeting the towers. Max and Guy are forced to continue to the capital on foot because their vehicle has been destroyed. Upon arrival, the Department of Special Research head, Stranick, learns of the matter and orders his aide, Fank, to bring Max to his office. Meanwhile, Max is held in a high-security facility where he is placed in a water tank that allows scientists to continue probing his mind. The process is abruptly halted when Fank, wielding Stranick's badge, removes Max from the facility against the scientists' objections. Concurrently, State Prosecutor Lesnick instructs his team to monitor any Max-related developments. Later, Lesnick discreetly retreats to his bathroom to endure a seizure in solitude. While transporting Max, Fank encounters a roadblock and is forced to seek an alternative path. Under time pressure, Fank begins to seize, prompting the authorities to intervene. Amid this commotion, the local populace starts a patriotic chant supporting the government, branding Max as deviant for his silence. Seizing the moment of distraction, Max makes his escape. Back at the government headquarters, it's revealed that the nation is under the tyrannical rule of the unknown fathers, including Lesnick. These leaders are merciless even towards their own, as we see one father being killed immediately due to his error. As Max roams the city, he finds a bar where he meets Rada, the waitress, and is instantly smitten. At this moment, one patron gets aggressive with Rada. Max intervenes, rebuking the man and quickly disarming him when he retaliates with a cane, causing him pain to deter further aggression. Max and Rada spend the afternoon together. Max shares stories of Earth and space, and it's revealed that Rada is Guy's sister. She invites Max to stay at her place. Walking on the street, the aggrieved customer blocks their exit, seeking vengeance with a group of armed accomplices. Despite their numbers and being armed with swords, they are no match for Max's superior agility and strength. He effortlessly dodges their attacks and incapacitates them with ease. Just as they seem subdued, more assailants arrive wielding heavier weaponry, yet Max combats them all simultaneously. In a dramatic turn, one attacker snares Max's leg with a rope, and another attempts to strangle him with a whip, but Max uses these very weapons to overpower them and defeat the group. The confrontation ends with the cane-wielding man making a last desperate attack with a bladed sphere, which Max easily dodges. At Rada's home, Guy unexpectedly reunites with him. Despite the surprise, Guy still allows him to stay because of his life savings. 
Max becomes more familiar with the local culture as days pass. The people are taught that they live inside the planet, not on its surface, and that there are no other planets or stars. Historical accounts credit the unknown fathers with using the towers to end a war against the rebels, labeled as degenerates, thus saving the nation. Guy, passionate about defending his homeland, encourages Max to join the guards. Guy successfully persuades Commander Chachu to let Max enlist. In training, Max learns the official chant and participates in drills that involve running through fire-laden areas and firing at targets representing the degenerates. Max is an excellent marksman, offering tips to a less skilled trainee to help him pass. However, Guy later reprimands him privately, emphasizing the importance of strict adherence to discipline as demanded by their superiors. When Max is officially accepted into the army, he participates in his first raid on rebels. The soldiers conduct the raid with extreme violence, using bombs and forcefully handling the inhabitants. Shocked that the so-called rebels are merely frightened ordinary people, Max drops his gun in dismay. While the rest of the squad detains them, a hidden rebel emerges and opens fire, but is quickly subdued and brutally beaten by Chachu for amusement. Max is disturbed as he witnesses dozens of civilians being violently arrested and herded into trucks. Later, the fathers preside over the rebels' trials under intense light. Some prisoners deny involvement in the rebellion, while others confront the fathers about their lethal actions. Depending on their responses, some are assigned labor, while others face execution. One rebel, displaying a mechanical arm, is cruelly punished by being placed in a suit filled with skin-burning gas. Forced to observe these harsh punishments, Max conceals his revulsion. After the day's events, Chachu doubts Max's allegiance and takes him to a forest to test his loyalty. He orders Max to execute two rebels who are sentenced to death. Max leads the rebels away under the guise of carrying out the execution, but instead he sets them free. Confronting Chachu, Max declares he is resigning. In a rage, Chachu shoots at Max. Then Chachu forcefully takes Guy back to the capital, leaving assumed Max's lifeless body in the forest. That evening, the rebels stumble upon Max in the forest and are astonished to find him alive, his body having rapidly healed. Max shares insights about Earth's advanced health technologies, explaining that his people are unfamiliar with the concept of fatal injuries and can only be fatally wounded by a headshot. In exchange, the rebels reveal that the towers, rather than providing defense, emit brainwashing waves. This explains the regular patriotic frenzy observed among the populace, which occurs twice daily. Those who are immune to these waves suffer seizures instead and are labeled degenerates by the government to justify their persecution. As the towers emit their waves, the rebels use sticks to prevent choking during seizures. Max, unaffected due to his terrestrial biology, assists the rebels through the ordeal. Subsequently, Max and the rebels breach a fence to enter the tower territory. As the rebels engage the soldiers and alarms blare, Max, unfazed by the gunfire, overpowers any soldier he encounters with sheer physical strength. During the fight, some rebels are killed and others take cover to continue their resistance. Max helps push their advance deep into enemy territory. Max successfully places explosives under the tower, and as he escapes, throws a rope through the loops on each rebel's clothing to pull them out, regardless of whether they are alive. Thanks to Max's strength, they retreat into the forest just in time to watch the tower collapse from the explosion. Later, Max covertly returns to the city and reunites with Rada, unaware that a neighbor spots him and alerts the authorities. When Guy returns home, a heated argument breaks out and he attempts to expel Max. Suddenly, the authorities arrive and Max dashes outside to protect the siblings, swiftly taking down the waiting soldiers. His efforts are abruptly halted when Chachu takes Rada hostage, forcing Max to give himself up. Subsequently, Max is imprisoned along with several others. Meanwhile, Stranick meets with Lesnick. Aware of Lesnick's role in the re-education program, Stranick proposes a deal to release Max for further study. However, after Stranick departs, Lesnick, intrigued by Max's apparent immunity to seizures and desiring that resilience for himself, orders his subordinate to abduct Max and fake his disappearance by informing Stranick that Max died in action. The following day, the prisoners are taken to the forest for cleanup duty, tasked with collecting every remnant of warfare. 
During this, they encounter a group of defense robots that open fire indiscriminately. The prisoners strategically wait for the right moment before retaliating and successfully disable the robots individually. After the threat is neutralized, the group resumes scouring the area. Zef takes this opportunity to educate Max about the creatures he encountered upon arrival, describing them as dangerous mutated humans that should be exterminated on sight. While exploring, Zef suddenly tumbles into a concealed pit, prompting Max to jump in after him to assist. Together, they discover a network of underground tunnels and begin navigating them until they stumble upon an old abandoned facility. As they activate the power, they notice a beast lurking in the shadows. They take it down and investigate the scattered old equipment. As Max and Zef examine lenses showing images of the desert, the beast seizes the opportunity to escape. Max instructs Zef not to shoot at it. The tension rises when they discover human bones scattered on the ground, and their situation worsens as the beast damages the equipment, cutting the power before launching an attack. The creature manages to pin Zef down, preparing to bite him, but Max intervenes, using his strength to wrestle the beast. After a fierce struggle, Max subdues the creature. Later, while Zef is asleep, Max cuts the ropes binding the beast and lets it run free. Zef is displeased with Max's decision, but Max insists that the creature is not merely an animal. The next day, Max and Zef meet with Metal Arm Guy and resume exploring. In the woods, they encounter a small red tank entangled in vines. As they approach, a black tank attacks them. The group takes cover behind trees, but their gunfire does not affect the tanks. Max then shoots at the red tank, provoking it into action. When the red tank fires back, it accidentally destroys the black tank. Max then sneaks up, enters the black tank, and disables it by cutting its wires. After sharing a meal, Max declares his intention to escape. Despite the security measures at the borders designed to prevent prisoners from fleeing, Max commandeers the tank and drives south, skillfully navigating through a minefield. As Max approaches a road guarded by soldiers, he stays hidden inside the tank, but the rules require every vehicle to be searched. When Guy jumps onto the tank to inspect it, Max quickly pulls him inside and drives forward, smashing through the gate while ignoring the gunfire from other soldiers. Guy is initially furious about their perilous escape, fearing potential execution if caught. However, Max reassures him, promising a much better life beyond their confines. Thanks for watching our recap of Dark Planet Episode 1, Inhabited Island. Don't miss more of Max's thrilling adventures in Dark Planet Episode 2, Rebellion, available on our channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our exciting movie journeys. Share your thoughts in the comments below and join us next time as we continue to explore and watch together.